a question. Mama told me about a story when y'all lived with Grant. Uh huh. She told me about a story. She said that you were scared, and so she never said anything about it. Uh huh. But she said that there was a story you told Granny about, and Granny told you to never say a word about it, and Mama never figured out about it. Because you were so scared that it made her scared, and Granny told y'all never to talk about it because Granny was scared. Well, I don't remember Mama never saying to talk about it, but um, the only story that I know for sure that happened to me when I was a kid there was, um, well, what was the, you know, it was a new um, neighborhood. Environment. Yeah, and had new houses, no telling who'd been, you know, living there then. Two boys that lived up the road from us, and, um, I don't know what we got in an argument about, but I was in the basement. You know how Dad's always making those shotgun shells? Yeah. So um, I got mad. <clears throat> I was in the basement alone. I remember being mad at them or mad at somebody. I think this is <clears throat> it. Okay. Well, there was a door. Okay, there was um, the garage. Yeah. Then there was a room between the garage and the stairs that led up into the living room. So she kept those doors shut to that room because... She kept, um, you know, all the seasonal things or whatever in there. Yeah. You're talking well, the, about Donna, ain't you? <clears throat> no, I'm talking about my mom when we lived in uh, Harrison oh, okay. at her old house. I don't know nothing about that. So, but you said the other thing happened over at Donna's? No. Oh, okay, never mind. I don't, I don't know who it was. I just know Okay. That but we're, anyway, we're talking about the same story. I, know I don't that know. Much. But then uh, I had took some shotgun shells and um, hit them in your bedroom. Or something. No, um, I was mad at I mad at them kids, and I picked up them shells and I threw them because I was mad. Well, they hit that door, and, went on. and then when they landed, I saw a very large white skeletal hand yeah. come out from under the door, door. and its hand, and its fingers were wide open. And it like touches the, shotgun, the shells. shotgun shells and retreats back. And the shotgun shells, they go like spin round and round and round. And then they made a perfect U right around my feet. And I look up, it's not there anymore. But it creeped me out. I mean, you can't just, even if a you person was there. No, even if a person was there and they pushed them, they're not going to make a perfect U. Because I wasn't like right beside that door. You know what yeah. I mean? But to see that hand, I was so scared. And then to see the... The things come around my feet. I now, went running. Me now, let me ask you a question. I went running. Was let me Pop, finish though. Was Papa and Granny still together? No, at the time? no, they, they were not. Weren't? They were not. Okay. not. That I don't think they were. Not that I remember. They could have been, but I don't well, really remember. All, all I remember is Mama told me that you and Jessica were together at Papa's, and you saw something really scary, and Papa told John to forget it. Well, I ran out of the garage, or the yeah, I ran out of the garage. And went up the steps to the front of the house. And I went running inside, screaming and crying, and, and telling Mama about it. And uh, that's all I remember as far as that point goes. But I do remember later on in life, we I brought it up or something at one point, And Mother said, I ha and she believed it wholeheartedly. She goes, I have never, ever seen you so terrified all your life. Like she knew See, that I saw what about. I saw. She yeah. believed me. So but, mama, mama told me about that, and Mama told me the exact way that you just told me. That's <coughs> why I, I was trying to figure out who Papa was married to at the time, because whoever it was was still with him. Well, I mean, they could have still been together. I mean, because yeah, they could have. Because Papa, Papa didn't know about it, but you told Granny, or somebody told Granny, and Granny was scared of it. Yeah. Because she told y'all not to talk about it. Well, see, Mother was scared of some spooky stuff. Anyhow, she told me... Uh, not too many years back that when the first house they lived in when I was a baby before Jen really I mean I guess yeah it had to have been before Jen was born obviously I was a baby uh, she said she thought there was a woman that would come in my room at night because, oh, ain't shit. because she ahead. said she said that there would be you know she would shut the door to my room where the crib was and stuff and she yeah. said the door would be open and and she said she, she heard things that made her believe a spirit was saying, coming to see me when I was a baby. Okay.
you go down this dirt road, and whenever you turn on this dirt road, you can either go about a mile down through there and stop and go to the graveyard. And what it is is it's a family graveyard. The, the, the land okay. was owned by, fam by a family, and everybody was buried in that one little The spot. story he is telling, a man hung himself after he killed his family. <laughs> they, they, get, they get aggravated. You want me to the two of you? What no. I, what I was getting at, though, is you can go down through there, and on the left is, is the graveyard, but you can keep on going. That's the house that got burnt down. Mm -hmm. okay? That was haunting. He killed, he, he tied his wife up and tortured her for two days before he killed her. But before, oh before yeah. he did that, he made her watch as he killed their three daughters. Mm -mm. And then tortured her for two days, killed mm -mm. her, and then hung himself from the chin. Oh my God! And the saying, yes. oh the saying is, whenever you get to the house, whenever the house is still there, you can see a silhouette of a girl in the window. Tell him how the house burnt. Well, listen to me. <laughs> Everybody, you, listen, are y'all listening to Brandon? Listen to Brandon. She keeps butting in. But whenever, well, I mean, they, they don't know. I know. Whenever you get there, whenever you get there, I'm and you step across the threshold, that's the one that makes you feel cold. Like mm -hmm. it makes you feel like something's there. And I'm not like real big into that stuff, but definitely feel something whenever you walk into this house. Mm. But there's used to whenever the house was still there, there was always a bird trapped in it, and the bird represented the little girl because every time you walked into the house, the bird would just scream. It would just go nuts, and that was supposed to be the little girl telling you to leave, get away. And mm. the second time you go, like that's the first time you go. The second time you go is the mom squeezing you. Like when I told you you could feel like somebody was hugging you. Yeah. It's the mom squeezing you and telling you to leave. They're trying to protect you and get you out. The third time you go, supposedly Horton will be the one to stay. Oh, no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> to the heck, well, no. See, I've, I've been there <laughs> no. once. I've been Holy once. shines. <laughs> I've been once to the house. But I haven't been back since because I didn't want to feel the mom. I didn't want to see Horton. Like, I don't want to be around that crap. But the graveyard, there's nothing behind that. The graveyard is just going up there, and it's real spooky. Well, but it's how you going to do it? And how's the little bird going to do anything now with the house not being there? It's a little, it's, it's just representing a little girl. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's the folklore. Like the bird is trapped in the house. It was, it's, yeah, it's folklore. So, like Brennan says, there's good ghosts that try to warn you, and then there's yeah, bad yeah. spirits. Okay, so the mom and the little girl is good ghosts. The little girl was supposedly reincarnated as the bird to warn you and fend you off. That's what Brennan told me. But you can only go three times. And I said, what are you way, talking about? The way I see it is, even if there's not a house there, how many times have you heard an owl just sitting in hooing? How many times have you seen a crow sitting in the top, a raven, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that? There'll be a bird in those trees somewhere, guaranteed, that's, that'll start, that'll make noise. Mm -hmm. And when I say make noise, I'm talking about, like, loud screeching. Because... Yeah. Yeah, ever, I heard, heard, of, I heard about the Horton house, but I haven't if gone you, because I heard it was burnt, but well, I didn't if, know stuff was still going if, on there. If you've ever heard a Tweety Bird sing, mm -hmm. it's real, like, calming, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's squealing. This it's it's like it's like you're squeezing the life out of it. Like it's, it's scared. <laughs> no, it's stupid. Stupid freaking walnuts. Freaking nuts. It's it's like you're squeezing the life. The nuts out are of trying it, to kill us. And it's screaming. Like I mean, it, it gets it gets scary. Yeah. And it, it's like just just being there makes you feel eerie. Mm. Even if there's nothing there, mm -hmm. it makes you feel eerie. But I've I've been there and I've definitely. No, I'm not going to say that I saw anything. I'm not going to say that I felt anything. But with that bird screaming, my heart pounding, like getting cold as soon as you walk across the threshold. Yeah, he said like even that. though the house isn't there, he said when you walk across the threshold of where it was, you immediately are cold. I mean, it's, me it's bad. Earlier. Like, it's weird. And mm -hmm. so that's why I say, like, I, I ain't never seen anything, but I, I never took pictures. We would just go and get scared and leave, yeah. you know. I need to take some here before we leave. You guys see those cards on that table right there? Yeah. During Halloween, of course, it was a month ago, we do like two tours of the guides because it's so busy. So, two weeks ago, about three, I had a tour on Saturday. Two tours, one at 6.15 and one at 9.15. I will tell you right now, honestly, those cards right there have not been touched in months. We keep them up here because the orphans, they like to... Exactly. So, I did my tour at 615, came through the house, the cards were just like that. I do my tour at 915, I always look at those cards all the time. I tell you right now, the cards were spread across the entire table. They were all messed up. 
And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I was like, but first, I have to make sure there wasn't another tour. Because if there was another tour, I don't know. So, I go through the house. Everyone follows me out because they're, they're so, they're like, I wonder if there was another tour. Maria, she's also the tour guide. She would be the only one because she would do an encounter tour during mine. So, I go out and I find Maria. I'm like, Maria, did you touch those cards upstairs? Because they were all around the table. And she's like, nope. I didn't have a tour. You're the only one doing the Jenny Wade house tonight. And those cards haven't been touched in months. The corner. I, I noticed how everyone just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's right there. Okay. Um, I, uh, I try to stay away from the corner because I don't like the corner. Um, but something happened to my manager, Joe, back in 2001. He became the new manager in February of that year. And he decides to take everything out of here and put it into the kitchen except for the bed there because it wouldn't fit through this doorway. He puts the bed in the center of the room and put wrapping over it. That way it wouldn't get ruined because he's going to paint the ceilings. So he starts in this corner and he goes around and then he goes to this corner and then a couple of hours go by and suddenly he looks up at that lantern right there because he's getting close to it and he realizes that he forgot to take that globe off the lantern. So he takes that globe and he places it on the mantelpiece right there. He's like, I don't feel like walking all the way into the kitchen. I'm just going to, you know, get it when I leave. So he keeps on painting. Hours and hours go by. He slowly starts to get into this corner and starts to get dark out. And he's getting hungry. So he's like, okay, it's quitting time. So he puts all the paint and stuff down in that corner. And he decides to, you know, leave, lock up, turn off all the lights. It's February, it's the off season. We don't do tours during the off season. So there was nobody in here. So next morning comes. He forgot to put that globe in the kitchen with the rest of the stuff. He left that globe on the mantelpiece the entire night. No one was in here. Comes in the next morning, turns on the lights, <coughs> starts painting again. Doesn't even remember about the globe. So he's painting and painting. Hours go by again. Something catches his attention up at the lantern. That's what he says. So he just glances up there, and then he's like, he remembers, like a light bulb went off. The globe, the globe, I put it on the, the mantle, the mantelpiece. He's like, where's the globe? He was looking for the globe. Guess where he found that globe, which I think is a very interesting now. Back in that corner, shattered glass all over the floor. Of course, now Joe, he didn't see that because he wasn't in that corner that day. He, the bed was, you know, in the middle there. He didn't really see it because he was on this side. That's about 15 feet away from the mantelpiece right there. I don't understand how that could happen. There was nobody in here. Investigation themselves. So they're coming in. And she brought something on the investigation with her. It's just her and Joe. They're stopped at that doorway right there. And she's like, Joe, we can't go in this room. And then Joe's like, why can't we go in this room? And then she's like, because there are two orphans in this room. Can't go in this room. Her name's Kathy Curtis. I forgot the name. I was like, what is it? That Kathy Curtis. She's a renowned medium in Gettysburg. Joe would make some stuff at this store. This is our friend Megan on the Saks Covered Bridge. It's a yeah. Confederate soldier that's standing on the other side. Oh, wow. I don't know if it's coming in blurry or not. It's trying to, ha it's right there. It's hard time focusing on it, sort of. Here, let me show you the other <coughs> Okay. Oh, this is as big as our machine can blow that up. Yeah, yeah, okay. See him there? Mm -hmm. but you see his hat, his rifle, his hands, his arms, his legs. Wow. His cuffs. I mean, he's yeah. totally standing there. Now, wow. my Gary took three pictures at the same time. That's the first one. The girl is just little and the man. That's the second one. So this is the first one. This is the second one. Yeah. Now, in the second one, there's something leaning against the bridge that's not in the first one. This big orb yeah. is not in the first one. Mm -hmm. And we think that's him turned around walking the other way. Oh, yeah. So if you wow. notice, particularly like in the big picture, you can see that he's a sentry. 
He has one elbow up and one elbow down. He's holding his rifle out in front of him. Wow. And that's why we got him coming and going. Because oh. he's walking back and forth on the bridge. That's amazing. Okay. Bye -bye. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm Lori Radkowitz. Okay. I grew up, I was Lori Jones, and I live about five miles in west of here. And so I went to Spring Place Elementary School, and I was friends with the daughter, one of the daughters of the older caretakers. Oh. And so, um, so it's like one summer day, I come over to play with Sandra, and so uh, her mother allowed us to go into the house. And we were old enough to know that you don't touch anything, you don't bother, we don't lay on the beds, mm -hmm. we don't touch anything. We were old enough to know that. But we were allowed to go into the house. And so, of course, we're giggly girls, we start running and we're chasing each other up and down the steps and there's nobody there's there's no visitors it was kind of you know early-ish in the morning um, it was a very very quiet day her mother and dad were I mean, her dad was i don't know what he was doing but her mom was in the house in their house and so we're we got probably a little bit rowdy and we were on the second floor uh in the bedroom that's the east bedroom on the second floor Okay. So we're laughing, we're having a good time, we're giggling, and we're standing there in that bedroom, and we didn't, we didn't slam <coughs> doors, you know, we were very careful, and we're just kind of standing there giggling, catching our breath, and we hear a boom, and it's not a boom from outside, uh -huh. it's a boom from inside the house, on the first floor. It's not a door slamming because a door couldn't slam that loud. Mm -hmm. It was just a boom. It was, it took us, because we weren't thinking scary, you know, we weren't yeah. being. Yeah, that wasn't on your mind. No, no, we were yeah. having a good time. We were running around. So the boom was, it, it, it just, it just, I can't explain it. Like shook the foundation, sort of? Shook us. Yeah. But not shook really your, the house. Yeah. It shook us. It was, it was like, Something was getting our attention to stop doing whatever it was we were doing. They didn't, whatever it was, did not like it at all. And it scared us so bad. We just froze. And she, I mean, she grew up here. Uh -huh. And it scared her. It scared me. We flew down those stairs and out the back door. And we were just, I don't even remember what happened after that. I was, we were in such a panic yeah. that. And it was years before I went in ever again. And yeah. I, and I certainly didn't go, I didn't come back over and play or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I've heard people say, like what you said before, like they'll hear a bone that sort of goes through your core yeah. and, and other places. So yeah. and there's it, something to that. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was, she She looked at me because I was like, what's the hat? You know, it scared me. But she, who lived here, had so much terror in her face. Mm -hmm. That scared me. Because I thought, yeah. well, apparently, and we just took off. Apparently, just, she's never heard it yeah, before, and yeah. she stays here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Well, thank you for your story. It's my little Billy. You have a shot with me. Yeah, you'll get a shot. You'll walk through. I come to this place for shuffling corners. I've had moms. I've had things. I heard footsteps behind us. I've seen lights in this place. My husband one time, we were uh, with a friend and daughter, and we were driving just down the road. And my husband says, Shot. And I'm like, What are we stopping for? You know? And he's like, You don't see all those people in white? And he said, Right there in front of the building. And he's like, uh, Yeah, and she said, I see them. I seen them. And me and I was there to see nothing. But as we got closer, they just sort of disappointed almost as if they were only, and I told Josh, when he said, why, he thought, I said, no, Josh, you know, of course. And, you know, if you look at Google pictures, all the nurses and the doctors would be dressed in white. Yeah. And they would always take pictures right in front of this place and for the lawn. I said, what you seen was them recreating yeah. the pictures that meant so much to them. Oh. They were only doing what they would do if they were still here or alive in real time. Those were good times for them. So 
this one, that one, like I said, it's a main hospital for a reason. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's even if the tongue doesn't have to go down and confused. Yeah, confused and hard and sad. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. And yeah. And no, I, th- I think a lot of them just think they have families and you know, a lot of them are just completely gone. They don't really realize what was going on here and after that. So they're definitely going to keep And I don't think they're really happy about the work. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're not. I don't have a uh, Yeah, this is kind of their place. I don't mm-hmm. think they're happy. I don't think they see it like this, but they probably see it like it would. No, yeah. Just come out. It's so, like all their stuff is still in there. Like, really? Yeah. I just oh don't know. God. Somewhere right here. My uncle knows where it's at. I don't. Wow. Because that looks like it almost land slid at one time, don't it? Wow. I think that might be I noticed there was a window open. Again, this is my second trip here. Renee turns around and hands me the keys and goes, Go, go close the window. And I'm sure I looked at her like, you know, <laughs> you know who, me? Because I had to come in here by myself. So I'm walking down the hall, and I get to that main intersection right there, geriatrics and uh, this main corridor and same day. And as I'm walking, I audibly hear, it's just him. Hmm. I had my recorder going at the same time. So when I got home, I was able to play it back and listen to it. And it was actually on the recording. Mm. Following that, it was, he's okay. And then I came on down and... Did you get that? Yes. All right. It, we're on break now, so I'm going to wrap this real quick. I went downstairs, closed the window, and as I came back up and had to go out to the pharmacy, I'm walking back down that corridor, and when I get to that main intersection, I heard a growl. Mm. And on my recording, and my wife will attest to this because it was hysterical according to her is you can hear my footsteps the whole time it's a normal cadence coming it's a normal cadence to a point unfortunately it didn't get the growl on the recorder but you could tell the exact instant I got the growl because my footsteps got a lot faster going out it was very quick <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go down this nice dark corridor and go down these steps and go out the front door for a 15 minute break what did you see at the Dutchess Playground? Children. Really? Yes. Can you, are you perceptive enough to know what period they're from or have any details? I'm just not a big history kids? buff, but it looked like uh, mid 1800s, a few a little bit further back. Okay. And uh, there's some Native American kids out there too. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. I never heard that before. Nice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read you the story. There are a thousand stories about the dead children's playground. The playground sit pushed up against the backbone of Maple Hill Cemetery in the remains of an old limestone quarry. It is said that in the 1960s, a child murderer buried the remains of his victims here. That may be just a story, but mediums and ghost hunters from around the country have said that the playground is littered with ghosts that wander in and out of the cemetery looking for solace. They say the ghosts of children come to play on the swings. Any visitor of the playground will tell you that the swings here move on their own, and if you're very quiet, you can hear the dead children laughing. Are any of you guys familiar with the black widow of Hazel Green? No, what do you guys know about her? Uh, she was a lady that, like, remarried 12? Multiple times. She was a bunch of times, and she just... Never dropped the previous name? <laughs> adding last names. And then there's the coat rack with the hat and the jacket. And mm-hmm. stuff. All right. Well, for those of you who don't know, we're going to learn a little bit more about her in this room. She's crazy. Line up in front of this, uh, fire. Black Widow Hazel Green. 
in a cotton field just outside of Hazel Green, there once was a house that was owned by the infamous Elizabeth Dale. Mrs. Dale married for the first time in 1812, and she was only 17 years old. Her first husband died of black tongue, and her second husband died of suicide. Her husbands kept adding up, and so did their mysterious deaths. For some, the cause of death was unknown. By the time Miss Dale died, most believe that she had killed at least a few of her husbands. Locals say that she kept a hat rack in her home with one hat for each of her dead husbands. According to legend, her ghost still roams the location of her old home, waiting to take another husband. So, this room is probably my favorite Alabama haunted place. Have any of you guys heard of the Moody Brick? Mm -hmm. Heard before, I've been hearing. Moody Brick. Just outside of Scottsboro, it's an old plantation. Oh. Mm -hmm. You've heard of it? Yes, okay. ma'am. Now, Moody Brick is somewhat contested because a lot of their stories are as much folklore as they are real ghost stories. So you can decide what's true and what's not true. Um, there's a story there that there was a slave revolt, the masters were very cruel, and they rose up. So you guys got to bear with me because I'm more—I like telling the stories more, and they've done much more in the actual movement. So she's going to direct me when I talk too much. Um, so the slaves rose up and killed their masters in their beds, and then the slaves themselves were hunted down and hung from the tree out front. Some people would conjecture that that's folklore. What we do know is that at least two Union and Confederate hospitals were put in the Moody Brick, and the ghosts of those soldiers are still said to roam the grounds today. Her husband had gone off to fight with the Confederacy, leaving her alone with her servant, an elderly black woman affectionately called Aunt Missy, who was more of a mother than a slave. Months after being in the house, word had gotten out that the Yankees were leaving town, and they did not steal. They just burned it. So the Lowry family left until it was safe to return. Anne would not leave, however, in the hopes of her husband's return. She and Aunt Missy stayed alone. One night, a group of drunken Yankee soldiers came to the house. Go on, there ain't nothing in here for you. The soldiers attacked Aunt Missy. Anne, looking out from her bedroom window above, saw it. Stop! Leave her alone! Anne came running down the stairs, and she tried to defend Aunt Missy. Somehow, in the skirmish, Anne was shot instantly. <laughs> Appalled by what they had done, the soldiers left and Aunt Missy had to bury Anne all by herself somewhere on the plantation grounds. Anne can still be seen wandering the house and looking out the upstairs window. Sick and she died. She was only 16 years old when she died. What made her famous was not her life, but the sheer volume and number of hauntings that took place after she died. She's popped up at her gravesite, she's popped up in the house, People report seeing her all the time, and her sightings began almost immediately after her death and are still reported to this day. Um, again, she was only. <laughs> Did she have consumption? No. <laughs> she died of an. Of, um, oh, I, I don't think they even knew what it was back then. I think it was just a flu virus. Really? Yeah. Oh, we've been told that it was consumption. Was yeah. it consumption? Yeah. That's what okay. we've been told. Consumption. Fair enough. Okay. If you're hacking up blood, you know, yeah. back then they always called it consumption. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, whether or not it was actually tuberculosis would be hard sure. to determine because that's what standard is consumption. That's true. Yeah. Maybe we should give her a bottle of silence. And we will.
were on two separate occasions, two different men who did not know each other, uh, actually working for different company companies. We're out here working on the ground, and we would typically not check on things to see how it's going. And they would ask him who the lady was in the window who was watching them while they were outside working on the ground. Mm-hmm. So the house was boarded up from there. There was nobody who could get in or out. So this happened a couple of times. And then people who were working inside the house kept reporting experiences. A man who was working on our stair rail uh, described what he felt was a really strong wind blowing past him. Mm-hmm. And a sound like a turkey flying over his head. And it scared him so much that he quit. <laughs> he got to go back to work on his face. The man who lives over here next door has actually been seen in our ghost. Uh, for the longest, he would not come back over into this house. Uh, he did finally get to where he would come back to the house, but he still won't go upstairs. That's why he had to try to So uh, men were reporting these kind of incidents. Uh, this certificate was up in the house alone. He was up in the attic working, and he laid his hammer down and went to go do something, probably went to the bathroom. And when he comes back, the hammer is gone. And he says something along the lines of, if you want me to fix your <coughs> house, you'd better give me that not <coughs> hammer. So he goes to do something else, and when he goes back, the hammer is back where he is at. Lovely weather. And of course, nobody is being in and out of the house all that time. So because of incidents like that, they start doing research. And they want to see... Are we ready to go? Okay, I'll wrap it up. So they wanted to see if they could find out the identity of the lady in the upstairs window. They start digging through all the history of the house and everything. And that's how they find out about the Underground Railroad. This house is a stopover point on the Underground Railroad. There's a secret room that is upstairs, and the way it is constructed, if you're looking at the house from outside, from any angle, you can't tell that it's there. See how many of y'all are still up on your uh, U.S. history? You may remember Dred Scott? Mm-hmm. Dred Scott case? Okay. Well, the Dred Scott case was actually, that plot was concocted in this house while Dred Scott was hiding out here. Wow. So all of that would have been lost if he torn the house down, and no one ever would have known. Uh, There's a man who's on our board of directors. He is a former professor who used to teach at A&M, and he said that this is probably the most important building to African-American history in the entire country. And nobody knows it's here. Mm-hmm. And uh, had it been torn down, no one ever would have known. So fortunately, uh, we dodged the bullet there when they decided to save the house.